99X in the morning, X. It's Barnes. It's Leslie. Fram, as we get into the holidays, it's always good to have good friends coming back around. Yeah, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. You want the warm and fuzzies? I always do. Yeah, please. Saturday, November 25th, 8 p.m., Variety Playhouse. You should already have tickets to go see Sean Mullins. Oh, that would be amazing. It'd be amazing to get inspired with the real Sean Mullins. Hey, Sean. <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> Man. Good morning. Good morning. Time has stood still. You look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah, you too. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's really good to be here. Thank you for having me on. Did you have a crazy year, like a bunch of shows? How was your year? Yeah, we stayed pretty busy. And in fact, we just got back from the West Coast a, a few weeks back. We started in Alaska, and um, which was wonderful. I, I taught at a guitar camp up there, which was pretty cool. Wow. Wow. And, um, and it was just like a bunch of crazy Alaskans, you know, for the most part. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, we just toured down the West Coast and got back. And, yeah, just, you know, loving being back home, too. That seems to be in the water, because have you seen Jewel on social media? She's gone nuts. No, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, I think it's in the Alaskan water. Yeah, I think it probably is. I'm really good friends with Steve Pulse. Do you guys know? Do you guys no. know Steve? Who's that? So Steve is a way back ex of Jules, and he uh, he wrote all those songs with her on that big record of hers that sold like a, gaz- ah. a gazillion records. He wrote "You Were Meant for Me" and oh, with her, and he's a wonderful guy and hilarious, and um, but he's told me some really funny stories. Yeah, would you like to share? Well, there's one about Sean, about how Sean Penn, <laughs> Sean Penn stole stole Jewel from Steve, my friend Steve. Oh, and, <laughs> so they were dating? Yeah, they were they were together dating, and they went on the Tonight Show for her, you know, uh, doing her big thing with the Tonight Show for the first time, and also on the Tonight Show was Sean Penn. <gasps> and after the Tonight Show, he invited him back to his place, and his place was actually. A little mobile home in the back yard of Madonna's mansion, because he was in the middle of a divorce with Madonna. No way! Well, this is like major scoop. This is crazy, right? I don't even know if he would like me telling this, but he tells it sometimes at his show. So. Well, the good thing is no one listens to us, so it, it won't. Your secret's safe on our airwaves. Oh yeah. So anyway, I don't even remember them dating, but I guess they did. Yeah, I guess they did, and right, right when it first blew up, maybe. But like, yeah, he he likes to say that. To, you know, basically, you know, he was doing all kinds of stuff that I can't mention that that basically made uh, made her uh, leave him and go with Sean. Penn. Oh my gosh, <laughs> scooped her up right out of the Tonight Show. I guess apparently she talked about it in her uh, one of her memoirs, like mid nineties. So yeah. I got to go back and research that. But yeah, yeah, it's. The other thing I wanted to ask you, you have this like really distinctive speaking voice as well. You know, I hear you on Instagram when you're like introducing a song or something. I was like, have you ever done any kind of voiceover work? Because I could hear your voice in one of those like period pieces, like a Taylor Sheridan 1883 thing. Because because it's like the, you know, that deep voice that you oh, have. Oh, thanks. I, I would love to do more. I have done some. Um, I certainly don't make most of my living doing that. Right. But I would enjoy it, uh, and I've done some, and and it it pays well, you know. And it's it's a different kind of work, as you guys know. It's a it's kind of a lot of, um, you know. When I go into the studio to sing, I usually don't, you know. I've learned to not sing more than three or four takes of something. Why? Well, because, over over refining. Yeah, because of the magic. Well, if you are if you know the song and you've sung it a couple of hundred times and you know it, mm. then. You're, if your voice is not in, then it's another day for that song. Oh, but, so you can just walk out. You're like, ah, not today, not feeling it. Yeah, it's hard, but you have to do it. And if you work with a good producer, if you're, you know, if you, you know, I learned that from Laurie White. She was like, okay, you get three, you get three takes. Yeah, and it was amazing. And you know, after three, if you don't get it, it's another day. It's because you know you're not warmed up great, or your voice is not working the day, or whatever. And 
Um, Man, and, if we did that on our show, there'd never be a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never, let's, it, let's adopt that policy, Barnes. What about a book on tape? Have you yeah, done a book on tape? I, I, oh, I, good I, point. I, yeah, I'd love to do that. I you think, haven't done one? No, no. I'd love to do that, though. I, It'd be fun. Someone's missing let us out. Be, let us be your agents, because like your voice is incredible. Yeah. Oh, Come thanks. On. You we guys have too. a big client list. We have Queen. That's all we have. Okay. <laughs> Bob the Queen, and we'll add Sean Mullins. I love it. What else have you been up to? Um, well, I've, I've got a new live record that's been out for a little while. Um, Adam Blank and Blank Records did it. He's been doing a lot of these over the last few years, like Driving and Crying and Collective Soul. and They're called Live at the Print Shop. It's a whole series that started on YouTube. And then, oh, uh, I've seen that. Yeah, yes, and yes. great engineering. They do a great job and, and put out really cool records, live records that aren't in front of a live audience, but they're all recorded. It's all recorded live and not doctored in any way. So it's a it's a cool thing. Driving and Crimes is great, and Collective Souls, of course, and uh, so a lot of cool stuff. And that's what I've got going. I'm, that's the one I'm pushing right now. Is that and the Variety Playhouse, of course, local, and uh, so yeah. You know what I love is that you've always made, you know, Atlanta your home. After all these years, I mean, and all the traveling, like, you could have gone somewhere else. What is it about, you know, Atlanta and home for you? I guess I'm just comfortable here. You know, I was born here, so I was yeah. born right down the street, you know, Piedmont Hospital. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> little plug. Like yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, um, but I've, I've always been comfortable here. And, and whenever I've traveled i've always enjoyed traveling all over wherever i can um but it's always good to get back to something you really know and atlanta's always been a a familiar place and a familiar people and yeah i dig it makes a lot of sense in this era of 99x coming back it's very interesting to talk to people like you butch ed roland who you know come up in atlanta and still are in atlanta a lot Let's set the record straight because I sometimes get moments confused with different bands and how what happened. Your song, Lullaby, was first played by who? By you guys. But was it, I, I know 99X, but oh, who? I believe, was it Steve? I believe Steve Craig played it on his Locals Only show. Okay. Yeah. And then brought it to Leslie after that, I believe. And, and yeah. I think he texted me or I don't know. We didn't have cell phones. You must have left me. That's when you had a text. You had to go tap, 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 like Morse code. I don't even think I had one. I might have had a pager. But. I just remember listening to half the song and going, oh, my God, this is a smash. And I think we went right into the control room. And I don't remember who was on the air, whether it was Steve or Sean. I, it could have been Sean Demery, but we put it on the air and then the phones blew up. And, of course, your phone blew up. But yeah. the song was just <laughs> undeniable. When did you know that... Oh wow, my life has changed. Like what in that time was there a moment that stands still in your head as a swing point? There were several. That was the first one when you guys started spinning it, you know, however many times a week it was. Well, because it's a smash. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah. and that was just wonderful and, and life changing in its own way locally. You know, like I couldn't go anywhere without hearing it. And I I went to even a, a pool party uh, that my friend was having and it was being played by the DJ at the pool party, you know. It was like, what in the heck has happened all of a sudden, you know? And, and no one was really treating me different right then. Everything was cool and local and chill, you know. And that, that then that stuff started happening as I got signed and started being on MTV and the BH1 and all that kind of stuff. Or you get you're seen in two dimensions all of a sudden, and, right? And you weren't mm-hmm. you weren't before. And, and then, so that comes with its own stuff, and that was another level of going, wow, this is really, you know, this is life-changing. Well, then you get nominated for a Grammy, and that has to just accelerate your brain right off the top of your head. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I've and i come to learn, and even back then to some degree, I knew that, that that's kind of all political. Um, but the song is brilliant, though. So, I mean, I don't know how you could say that was a political choice. No, I just mean that, I think all the labels have their, you know, their contestants. Oh, I you see know, what you're and, saying. And, and then you've got, you know, an artist like Eric Clapton who won that Grammy. And it was the Grammy I was up for was best male pop vocal. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. you know, wow. I, mm-hmm. I kept thinking to myself, I, I've never really been a pop singer, but I guess that's what this is. <laughs> that's what this has become. <laughs> it's what it's become, you know. <laughs> and uh, so it was an interesting thing, you know, and I got to meet a lot of 
cool people that I grew up watching and and uh, kind of idolizing, like Gene Simmons and you know different people like that. It was fun. Billy well, Joel. Billy Joel. And, oh yeah. How often do you write? I mean, are you writing all the time, or do you need to be inspired? How does that work for uh, Sean Mullins? I don't write all the time. I've, mm-hmm. I've been through times in my life where I did that, but I was younger and kind of hungry for whatever. I don't know. Um, and I don't really feel that anyway, uh, that way anymore. I feel like I just want to be a great dad and a great husband. And and when I can get out there and make music, that's that's icing on the cake. But it, so it's, you know, it's really different. So I, I write, yeah, from inspiration. And uh, I'd say it's once or twice a week that I'm, uh, I think I always think about it, and I wonder if mm-hmm. I should be doing it. But whenever I forced it, it, it didn't come out well. So I, I try to at least have, uh, you know, some work in my head already done before every it ever goes to paper. If that makes sense. Well, uh, one micro question: Have you ever gone into public shopping and your songs been on the speaker? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surreal, yeah. That's got to be because I hear yeah. it all the time. I go into Publix and eh, <laughs> all the time. I get embarrassed. I bet, but, but yeah. no one's going. Hey, wait, there's Sean. Unless they're like really focused because it's out of context. They did it to yeah, me. Yeah. They did it at the dentist one time. <laughs> oh, it was awful. There's, there's nowhere to hide. They were, they were giving me X-rays, oh and all of a sudden God. the song comes on and. And the bill was like twelve grand at the end. And everything's know? gonna be all right though. <laughs> Every little thing. The morning X with Barnes and Leslie. Ninety nine X.